How are you, Art? Very good. Nice good to, to see, see you again. Good to see you as always. No, thank you for having us here in beautiful uh, Bottega Bay around San Francisco, north of San Francisco. Beautiful. I mean, North California is such a beautiful place. Huh? It's beautiful, okay. especially this time of year. I mean, the weather's nice. It's, uh, what, 72, 70, 63 outside. It's kind of cool. But like summers in San Francisco, people get a bit surprised. It can be a little bit cold that's, sometimes with the wind. That's exactly it. So, Orth, um, where do we start with the good news from Kia? Because, I mean, there's been a lot of that lately. We have been very busy this year. We, uh, last fall, introduced our new Optima. Uh, that was our first 2016 model. Uh, we followed that in January with a brand new Sportage, uh, which uh, is a new look for us. You know, has kind of a, an evocative yeah. design, doing extraordinarily well. Uh, all of our dealers are telling us more, 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 more. So, I mean, it's kind of the trend, you know, everything's moving kind of towards That's great. CV. Yeah. Uh, and uh, in Chicago, we announced uh, a new name for us, uh, the Kia Nero, which is going to be a dedicated hybrid. Um, and we're going to introduce that uh, probably later this year. Uh, we showed it to the press in uh, Chicago. A new Optima hybrid, a plug-in hybrid, which is going to be a new business for us. Uh, we showed a new Cadenza in New York. Yeah. Which is going to come out in about a month, you know, so there's, within a span of about a year, we've introduced uh, four all new cars. But then, like, the big, big news came last week, I guess? So, obviously, <laughs> the big news, of course, is uh, we're number one in J.D. Power's uh, initial quality survey, which is a huge, huge accomplishment for us. And it's it's been uh, a 10-year endeavor for us to really try to get on top of quality. Um, and it was a concerted effort from our chairman who ordered us and we moved every portion of our company to go after one goal, which is to be number one in quality. So you mentioned a 10 year effort, but in reality you've been here 22 years in the 22 US. 22 years so is exactly right. I guess that's after 12 years, you, I guess someone figure out, okay, we cannot keep doing this. We're gonna do something better. That's what happened? Basically, um, and then um, starting at about seven years, seven years, uh, 2006, almost 10 years ago also, uh, we moved in a different direction with design as one of our, our key uh, points of difference. We hired Peter Schreier. Yeah. Uh, away from Audi, so uh, an effort for quality and also an effort for styling at the same time. And look at the results. We're one of the top brands now. We're uh, number six. Uh, we had record sales last year, over 600,000. Uh, last year, um, we sold our six millionth Kia since coming to the U.S. and uh, two millionth Kia coming out of our plant in Georgia. So there are a lot of Kias out there, and I think we've turned a lot of people's minds around about what our brand represents and, uh, and, yeah. and who we are. So, but still, I mean, even 22 years in the automotive industry, I mean, you've been in other countries before, but 22 years in the U.S., that's pretty a, a short period short. of time because no, that, right, we're talking right. about like three cycles of when people buy cars. That's exactly right. And, uh, I mean, people still, I mean, unfortunately, people still remember more the bad things from the very beginning than they remember what they have, what it happened last year or last week and this year. Yeah, well, first impressions are lasting impressions and, you know, the, the perception uh, always lags reality and yeah. I think um, we're mindful of that. If you think about the average loan for a new car these days is 72 months. Yeah. You know, it's a good 30, 40% of all uh, the auto industry's business, which means those folks are out of the market for six years at a time. Yeah. And, and a lot has happened. In and a lot happens years. at the same time. I mean, look at our, our, our lineup, how we've changed. We've added new models. Uh, so there's, you know, it's work in progress. More and more people are, are uh, seeing the new Kia and coming around, and we've had we've had record sales. We're outpacing the market, uh, and uh, we had a great May, and, and June's closing out here in a couple of days, and it's looking strong also. So going back to the quality uh, factor uh, in, in the Kia cars, and and I know it takes a lot of work and a lot of effort and a lot of. Uh, People, thousands of people come. I mean, when, when people come in and like they press the volume bottom here and it works, they don't realize how much work is behind just that, just that little thing. And when you multiply that by what, thousands of parts in the car and your suppliers and all that, right? I mean, it's like really an amazing thing that what you have, guys have achieved in this well, and short time. The thing that's really kind of uh, telling on the, the JD Powers um, IQS survey is that it's not only things gone wrong, but things that are difficult to use. Yeah. Which means uh, navigation, electronics. So more technology make it a little bit more difficult. Voice uh, recognition, too many 
switches and knobs that people can't figure out, uh, controls that don't make sense. So um, I think really kind of the one of our key points is that we concentrate a lot on the voice of the customer. And uh, VOC is what we refer to it is really, really important. So we do a lot of surveys. When we launch a new vehicle, we do uh, a quick study, early buyer study. We look at rejectors, we do focus groups. We try to really understand how people use their car and we listen to feedback to make sure that we get it right. And it's not just once, but it's program after program, year after year. And if you look at the charts, uh, it's slowly like a seesaw going up. Uh, last year we were number two. This yeah. year uh, we were number one ahead of all premium and non-premium. So that, yeah, that's the amazing thing because I think it's, it's, I believe it's the first time that a non-luxury brand it's exactly makes it to the it. number one. It's amazing. We're so proud of it, and I think that uh, it's just really a testament to show that what we're doing is working. And that brings us to this car that we're driving now, which is, uh, I guess, your second model in the lineup. It is. This is the 2017 Forte. It's our compact. Yeah, because uh, under under this model, what is it? The Rio. The uh, Rio's just underneath this, and just yeah. above it is the Optima. It's um, one of our five sedans that we have. Uh, it's our second best-selling sedan, uh, in addition to the Optima, which is our number one sedan. So it's quite uh, important for us. It's yeah, about exactly. And I was I, sales. I wanted to start talking about that when you mentioned luxury, and obviously it's not a luxury brand, but like listen to the quietness of this car. We're going at 60 miles an hour almost. The road is pretty good, but like. We don't hear anything. I mean, it's, it's like super quiet. I mean, this is a level of quietness that you would have expected in a luxury car not very long ago. Well, and it's uh, a testament to uh, body construction. We put a lot of effort into making sure the body is rigid and solid, uh, which dramatically reduces noise. Uh, and also paying attention to uh, the ceiling and uh, blocking of the sound and also just the quietness of the engine. Yeah. One thing that you will hear occasionally is this. Now it's not doing it like that. Oh, the DDD. There it is. That's on the noise aspect of it. Like this is a, a, a very good value for your money, but you're getting a lot like in looks, in design, in convenience, but also in technology now. Well, right? this is our first application. The, the sound you were hearing was our lane keep assist, uh, and it, it uses a, a forward-looking camera to kind of watch between the lines, and it's a precursor for autonomous driving. Well. We announced at uh, CES uh, this last January yeah. our roadmap to a fully autonomous vehicle and we're starting off with the safety equipment and lane keep assist, autonomous emergency braking, um, uh, poor collision warning, all this technology is going to be incorporated and uh, move us forward to a path of semi-autonomous and then fi and finally fully autonomous. And it and starts off in a compact car. Exactly, I, well, that's my next point. I mean again this is the second model into the lineup in the order of the lineup going up and you still are able to incorporate, obviously this probably is incorporated in the higher trim or like the, be, the best um, version that you, or the packages, I don't know, but still to be able to get this in a compact car is pretty amazing. Thing. It is amazing and we're, um, and we're gonna keep moving forward as we come out uh, with new vehicles, uh, both above this and below this with similar technology. So this car, also another big part of the story is that it's built in a new plant in Mexico. We just announced our second uh, plant in uh, North America. It's in uh, uh, Pescadilla, which is just east of Monterey, Mexico. And uh, it is a significant investment all in between ourselves and our supplier park. It's about a $3 billion investment. Uh, eventually, it'll be able to produce uh, 300,000 cars. Uh, this Forte is the first vehicle that's coming out of the plant. Uh, we'll have a second one for the U.S. market, which will be announced uh, probably sometime next year yeah. uh, when that uh, second vehicle goes into production. But really, I think uh, it's uh, that plant is aimed at uh, both the Central America, the Mexico Central American market, but also South America and also North America. So if you think about all the Americas, that's what that plant yeah. will will supply. You'll be bringing cars from there to Mexico, and maybe that's another question that some people might have still which I mean it's not based on any any truth quality I mean people think that American cars or Japanese cars or Korean cars are better than Mexican cars or Canadian cars or Lithuanian I don't know like the industry has gone uh, so global now that uh, I guess the quality that you now are uh, number one for 
I mean, it has to come from anywhere in the world, right? Well, it's pretty much the same. I mean, I was just at the Mexico plant just a few weeks ago. I mean, it is a state, it's our best plant yet. It's state of art, uh, state of the art technology. Uh, it has uh, the highest level of automation. It has the, the latest standards of stamping and quality. And uh, the workforce is very motivated. Uh, they, like anybody else, love to have a good paying job with benefits yeah. and hard workers. And they, uh, the best of the best out there and um, this show is always fantastic uh, they've got a great attitude they want to build a good car and uh, they know it's a very competitive market and if they do a good job and their car is successful it's more programs in the future yeah and uh, I'm from Mexico originally and uh, unfortunately most of the news coming out of Mexico is not that good but what you guys like well, the whole automotive industry there's a lot of, of uh, movement there a lot of companies are coming in and building plants and you guys are bringing the, the only almost or the best news out of Mexico in the, in the past few years well I mean I know that um, BMW's made announcements Audi's uh, building yeah. new cars down there we've got Toyota and Honda Ford just announced a new plant so and Volkswagen has been there forever you know if they if there's a quality problem I don't think uh, all I, these yeah, manufacturers no, would be going not, down there and I know it, it's uh, it, we've had great luck so far that's excellent. So a little bit more about this car. Can you talk about uh, uh, powertrains and, and variants and pricing for this? Sure. We introduced it uh, a few years ago back in uh, 2010 as a 2011 model. And uh, this is its uh, kind of a facelift for uh, product enhancement. Um, and this is, as far as uh, mid-cycle refreshes, is quite, quite extensive. Uh, new engines. We have uh, a new 2-liter MPI using Atkinson technology. Uh, which reduces pumping losses. Sounds fancy, but basically, um, we're able to get um, a little bit more efficiency out of a two-liter engine. It replaces a one eight, so the, okay. in, in the increase in displacement uh, really is to offset the loss of horsepower by using this new technology. So, and all uh, the horsepower and torque ratings are, are very close to each other to the 018, but the mileage is up quite a bit. Um, in addition to that, um, we carried over significantly revised the two liter with direct injection that's in the vehicle we have here today the EX model which is our top uh, sedan um, and then uh, in addition we have a uh, significantly revised six-speed automatic that's on on everything um, and then in addition to that we've uh, upgraded the safety this has a small offset countermeasure so uh, for the new rigid uh, rigid uh, test from NHTSA the one that offsets uh, the from offset website, yeah. Uh, so we're, we're targeting good ratings on that. Uh, we've added uh, autonomous emergency braking, the dynamic bending lights so we can get top safety pick plus ratings, uh, a new UVO system, which uh, is our latest technology in infotainment. Uh, this one also features Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, in addition to a whole suite of telematics features, uh, which means you can pl plug it plug it into your phone and uh, speak to it, uh, speak to Siri or Google now, just like you would yeah. and anything else. So great looking vehicles. Also a new grade, we have an S grade that's uh, sportier with a high mileage uh, engine and uh, a great looking wheel. Uh, so in all, it's just a great car. And you have uh, still the five door? We still have the five door. We also still have the coupe and the five door and the coupe also offer our uh, 1.6 liter turbocharged engine. Uh, now with a, a seven speed uh, dual clutch transmission. Before it was a 6AT and now we moved over to a DCT. And that in a price range that it's uh, really affordable. I mean, when you start, what, around 16, I, I believe? 16,340 is a, for the, the base model, manual transmission, uh, all in with uh, an SX5 door with the uh, turbocharged engine uh, and the technology package probably right around 26 to 27,000. Yeah. So that's a range, it's a you know, $11,000 range, which is uh, quite nice, three body styles and three inches, so we've got a lot of variety um, and also a lot of choice for the customer. And this is still, you know, you look at, you, we know about all the talk about moving, you know, a lot of buyers moving to CUVs. This is still, uh, uh, this in the midsize of the two largest sedan segments out there. So, uh, you need so the Optima is still number one in your sales? In our sales, we did uh, just about 162,000 last year, our top model. And this one, uh, we're topping a 12 month rolling average of right around 10,000. Oh, so, very significant. Very yeah. significant. Both of these cars are, are uh, huge players for us. Excellent. Well, uh, we're going to keep uh, enjoying the drive here around, uh, well, we're now away from Bodega Bay, but uh, anyway, around.
from North Carolina, no, North Carolina, North California. North California. <laughs> and uh, a pleasure to drive with you again. It and was like, awesome congratulations. You I mean, Thank you like, very much. you work is, uh, I mean, you must, you must be really, really, really busy. And I don't know, let me ask you that final question. Now, with this number one, does that, does that add more pressure to your job? Because you want to stay, you want to stay there. You want to stay there, right. Uh, <laughs> it's a moving target. You know, things change every year. And, uh, you know, you introduce a new car, a new technology, and somebody else might uh, have a, a, a different play in their model cycle. So, yeah. you know, so we'll, we'll see. We're working hard. We're going to try to keep it. Yeah, hopefully, you get some rest in between. We've got the systems, <laughs> in, we got the systems in place, and I, I think we're, we have a good shot at it. Excellent. Thank you very much, Art. Thank you. Thank you.